Well, federal investigators say that the Amtrak train that crashed in Washington yesterday was speeding when it went off the rails. The National Transportation Safety Board says that the train was clocked at 80 miles per hour. The speed limit on that stretch was 30. The crash killed three people and dozens were injured. We're also learning more about the victim. Zach Wilhoyt worked at Pierce Transit. A spokesperson confirmed his death. They said he's always been deeply appreciated and admired by his colleagues. He will be sincerely missed. Well, this train was the first ever service from Seattle to Portland on a newly built track. It was going around a curve over Interstate 5 when 12 passenger cars derailed. The NTSB has been at the scene since last night investigating the crash. We are um, lucky that we were able to secure the event data recorder from the rear locomotive. And uh, that's how we're able to know about the, uh, the speed. There are a lot of different factors that go into uh, the environment, the territory, and um, there, there are different speed profiles. Uh, so we'll be looking at all of that and determining whether uh, and why this train was going 80 miles per hour. CBS News correspondent Chris Martinez joins me now from a very rainy Washington. I see you there, Chris. What, what are investigators hoping to learn from the crash site? Arena, certainly they are hoping to gain some insight as to what specifically uh, caused this derailment. They want to know if this was simply a, a speed factor here or if there was something else that might have led to this. As you mentioned, it's rainy, it's windy. You can see the way I'm having to grip my umbrella here. And it's very cold. So these are tough conditions to be doing this work. But if you take a look down here, you can see a lot of, a lot of folks down there uh, where this derailment happened. Uh, they are working here now and they have been working throughout the night trying to uh, glean whatever they can from this scene. They are inspecting the, the mangled train cars up close. They're in the process right now of actually removing about five of those from this scene. Uh, and once everything is out of the way, they will begin to more closely inspect the tracks to see if there uh, might be anything there that can give them some indications uh, as, to, as to what caused this deadly derailment. This will, uh, by the NTSB's own admission, likely, Rena, be a, a rather lengthy, lengthy investigation. So who will investigators be talking to, Chris? Well, they'll be talking to, to anyone who they feel they can get some information from here. That might include some passengers, uh, witnesses, and certainly crew members here from this train. Uh, that could be uh, specifically uh, uh, what gives them the most information here is talking to those crew members. And we are, we are being told that uh, those interviews uh, between investigators and the crew, uh, that could potentially start uh, at some point here today. So they're hopeful uh, that from talking to the people who are on board the train uh, and perhaps some people who maybe witnessed this up close from the road here from Interstate 5, uh, that could also give them some, some very critical information. And Chris, there's something called positive train control. It's used to sort of slow or stop speeding trains. That wasn't in use. Are investigators considering this a, a big factor in the crash? Well, they're certainly uh, wondering if that, if that could have played a role here in, in terms of preventing uh, um, this derailment, I mean, what we know at this point is that the, the train was going about 50 miles an hour faster uh, than it should have been in this particular stretch of track. So uh, whether positive train control would have prevented this, um, certainly that's a question that investigators are asking, or, or at the very least, uh, uh, it might have made the derailment perhaps less severe. Um, that is one of the many questions that they're, that they're uh, asking uh, as they try to determine the cause here, and that's assuming to a degree that, that speed uh, was the sole or, or the primary factor, at least, um, in this derailment. If it was something other than the speed, yeah. uh, then the, the positive train control would have only done so much. All right, Chris, we want to thank you so much for joining us at a very windy and rainy Washington state. Thank you very much.